All right. Well, hey, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, we have a couple joining us on Zoom. If you're on Zoom, try to get my attention if you have a question. Um, and we have, a, we have a handful more that couldn't be here today that are coming next week or I'm meeting up with throughout the week uh, to let them know about this trip. But I'm excited that you guys are here. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to stare at Paige the whole time. <laughs> Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to walk through several different elements of next summer's mission trip. And you can see we're calling it uh, the hope of Mexico. It's kind of a twofold. Part of it is we hope we're going to Mexico. We're going to talk about that aspect of things uh, in a little bit. If you have questions at any point, feel free to let me know. Um, I hope you do have questions. There's probably things that you're wondering that maybe I've thought about or haven't gotten to yet, and I'd love to be able to walk through those things with you. Uh, at the end of our time, up here on the music stand are the applications. We'll talk about what's in that a little bit later, but just know that those are there. So what are we doing? What, what is this thing? It's a short-term mission trip, but this is with two other churches. Uh, Serve 2019 was with 10 churches, about 350 high school students and leaders. Uh, this is two other churches, so three converged north, well, one other converged northwest church and one converged northwest adjacent church, in a way, uh, with no more than 100 people. So with Serve, we went to Mexico and we camped uh, in this giant dirt patch in Tijuana. This time we're not going to be camping. We're actually going to be staying with the organization that we're working with. They have an opportunity for us to stay with them. And really what this comes down to is this is an opportunity to minister and to represent Jesus, both to other people, both to, to lend a helping hand to be able to experience something new, but also to one another. Because really the team dynamic is probably one of the most pronounced and profound things that happens in a trip like this. We're going to be helping other people in a variety of ways, but also we get to walk through it together. I want to show a couple, a couple pictures um, from SERP 2019, just so you get an, exam an idea of some of the things that went on. Um, we have a couple slides and pictures. So you can see we did stop at In-N-Out in California because that's what you do. It's delicious, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry for you. Uh, so we built homes. You can see a couple of the, the crew working there. We also did a ministry day. That's what Colton's doing. He's taking a bag of food in uh, to a local ministry that we served at. Those are some of the examples of homes. They're nothing glamorous. They're nothing big. They're 10 by 14 plywood and two by four uh, buildings. But for some of the families down there, this is doubling or tripling the size of the home that their family already has. We served many people that their home, the similar size, let's say 10 by 14, about the average size of a, a room or a master bedroom in an American house, has two to seven, eight, nine, 10 people all living in there. And that's their everything. There's not another kitchen or there's not another bedroom. They, they work and live all in one spot. And so we're able to go. And one of the ways that we help is by providing them some additional housing. And you can see a couple more pictures there. The bottom two, we spent one day and went to a local ministry and was able to serve alongside them, play with the kids, uh, do some work. Zeb and Jace really got the raw end of the deal. And they were given a, a really packed utility equipment room to sort and clean, but they did it joyfully. They, they were incredible with it. And so the trip uh, like this is broken down into a four to one ratio. So it's four days of building, one day of ministry. Our team built eight homes over the course of the week because we built one home a day and we had two teams. The group overall at Serve, uh, we built about 90 homes with all of the teams out there. And then the other day, the fifth day, uh, is a day of ministry to be in the community in different regards or different areas and to be able to serve the local people in a different way. Some of the churches go to orphanages. Uh, there's a dump in Tijuana that a lot of people go to to serve at. Uh, we went to an organization that was able to provide some assistance for families essentially waiting to enter the United States that were in one of those awkward zones of waiting for visas and everything to come through. And we were able to serve them and, and hang out with them for a day. I do want to reiterate, there are things about this trip that are similar to the last mission trip that we did, but it is not the same trip. Serve 2019 was great. The team that we had was awesome. We had a wonderful time. One of the cool things is that team dynamic will never happen again. Much like this Mission 21, as I've been calling it, whatever team we take there and the experiences we have will be unique to that group. We're not looking to 
relive or redo everything that we did. We're taking what we learned and applying it. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So there's two main parts of the trip that we're going to. The first is in San Diego. So we are flying from Seattle to San Diego. Uh, we're going to be staying at a local church down there that has opened up their building to us for the night before and the night after the trip. And they're going to allow us to stay there. We're going to have some fun stuff planned with the other churches that are going. And then when we head into Tijuana, we will be working and staying and living alongside what's called Caravan Ministries. Caravan Ministries uh, go back in time with Serve and Converge Northwest. How long, Steve? 30 years, 40 years? Yeah. My first trip was 86. 86. And that was, so 86 was the first Serve, and we have Converge Northwest churches that go every year. So we have an incredible relationship with this organization. They have a what they call a base in Tijuana where they... They have year-round interns, college-age students that come and live there year-round, engaging in ministry. And then those who are leading the build teams while we're there will be staying on site. They have uh, dorm rooms that we will be staying in. These are not like American-style dorm rooms. These are a room with 25 bunk beds in it. And so there's only four rooms, uh, but it houses 100 people. So it'll be nice and cozy and wonderful. And man, I can't wait till that Tuesday or Wednesday. It's going to smell real nice in there. But it's different than last time. We're not camping, we're staying in bunks, and we're staying on site. We'll be building houses, we'll be serving. I'm actually hoping that uh, for our ministry day, one of the things that we might be able to do, we support a couple missionaries and pastors, both in Ensenada and just outside of Ojos Negros. I'm actually hoping that for one of our ministry days, we are able to go and visit them. So we talk a lot about Juan down in Ensenada. My hope is that on one of those days, we take a pause from building, we come together as a team, and we're able to go down into Ensenada and, and, and hang out with them and see his ministry and just spend the day with them. It would be absolutely incredible. It's about an hour away, so it's super doable. And there's going to be a lot of intentional team building, team trainings. Uh, if you were on it before, you kind of remember some of those things. We're, we're going to have monthly meetings. The dates are in the application. And there are times for us to come together. There's a lot of unexpected that we're going to encounter. And the better that we, we can come together as a team beforehand, the more enjoyable it will be to walk through some of those things together. I know I put meals on here. Food is usually one of the biggest questions. Like, all right, yeah, sure, we're going to build, we're going to do that, I can swing a hammer, whatever, I can sleep wherever. Tell me about the food. So what we're going to be doing is uh, breakfast will be at the caravan dorms. It's not like a fancy kitchen or anything. So we'll be getting essentially some grab-and-go breakfast. We'll be hitting Costco and either... San Diego or Tijuana and stocking up for the week uh, for our breakfast foods. Lunch is on the job site. So the families that reach out to Caravan asking for help, one of the requirements the Caravan asks of them is to feed the group that comes and builds for them. That's their only expense. It's awesome. The food is really, really good. Here's one of the things I'm going to say about the food. Whatever a family serves for lunch, you eat. Because chances are they have saved and sacrificed not just that day, not just that week, but probably that month because they're so thankful for what this group from the United States is doing that they go all out. Now that may look a little bit differently than what we think going all out may be, but their generosity is absolutely incredible. Whatever they serve, we eat. Zeb's doing his vegan vegetarian thing. I don't know what it is. Every house we built, family serves meat, and he enjoyed it just as much as the rest of us. Now, I get there may be a couple dietary things that, that come into play, but we're not giving the families that we're building for a list of what, we, of what we need them to make for us. If there's something severe, we will work around that. We'll figure something out. But when we're with the families, what they serve is, is what we have. And let me tell you, it's so good. It's so, I still dream about the first lunch that the team, we had two teams in, in 19. Uh, the team that was with me, uh, Paige and Courtney were with me. And man, the first lunch, like the first day of building was probably our best day all week. The food they serve we, we come into their house and they've got this bowl, I kid you not, like this big of, like, of homemade ceviche. They've got tortillas, they've got tostadas, and they're just, for like an hour, just slinging the food. And there's no, there's no no, they just keep giving it to you. And it's the best. Uh, and then for dinners, what we're gonna be doing is we're hoping to split three and three. 
three of the nights have dinner at Caravan, either bringing in local restaurants to essentially cater uh, to us or cooking ourselves and being able to provide food to the community as well. And then three of their nights, we're going out. We're gonna find, we're gonna go to local restaurants again. So good. Like, yeah, we have Mexican food up here and yeah, it's good. Oh man. Uh, so we'll be going out in, into that. So the food while we're in Mexico is really, it's community focused. We're here to be in their culture. We're here for ourselves to learn something new. Food is a great way to get to know other people's cultures. And when you're sitting there eating with someone that you don't share a language with, man, food's a common language. We can all speak that. We can all engage and enjoy that together. Uh, on the bookends of it, while we're in San Diego, we're still trying to figure those things out, but I'm not as worried about figuring where we're going to go out to eat. Uh, while in the States. Those things will get worked out. But why do something like this? One of the things that a lot of people will say is, yeah, this is good, but like, why not just raise the money and just, and just send money? Because the, the truth of the matter is when it comes to building, and we saw this with some of the families that like to help out, and I, I went on two mission trips in high school, and it was true then too. They're, they're more efficient and they're better at building things than we are a lot of these families, because a lot of the dads work in construction. So they know what they're doing. I remember when I was in high school, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I'm doing my best, but, but why, if we could just send money and call it good, why be part of it? And I think it's important for us in our relationship with Jesus to be part of something bigger than ourselves, to get a glimpse into how other people live, how other people operate, what their community, what their daily life is like. Because I think living in the Mill Creek, Bothell, Everett area, we, we're a little bit of a disconnect. Because we actually live in a way that the minority of the world lives in. And the people that we see in Mexico, the ones that we're walking alongside, the sights and sounds, those are the majority throughout the world. Jesus calls us to go into all nations to make disciples. Jesus calls us to love one another, telling us that that is what everything in Scripture is hinged on. And in this opportunity, we get to do both of those things. It's a really great way to gain perspective. It's a really great way to gain an appreciation for the things that we have. The money fundraised will feel a whole lot different once you're there and you're seeing what's going on. And you recognize how gracious and generous people are to send us on a trip like this. And for me, I still remember my first time in Mexico. It was my junior year of high school. Uh, you guys are getting off easy. We're going in the summer. My two mission trips were over Thanksgiving. So we gave up, gave up a holiday, which actually I preferred. It was kind of cool to give something up. And then we made a huge Thanksgiving dinner for the community as well. And I'll never forget the homes we built then were, were different. It was with Habitat for Humanity, so they're a little bit more in-depth, larger buildings. But when we were done, it would take three and a half days to build and handing keys to a family that have never had a locking door before. To be able to come in the morning to a job site, and it happens um, for this as well with Caravan and this understanding that these families, these fathers will generally sleep out or stay up on their cement pad as the home's being built on because they're excited and they don't want anybody to do anything to it. And you start gaining a different sense of appreciation. You start seeing things for bigger than just us. Not in a way, one of the things I don't want us to do is to go into an experience like this and come back and feel really guilty about the way that we live because God has blessed you in different ways, but now we have a better understanding of what can we do to bless those around us. And there's just the enjoyment factor. Being able to come together as a team, fellowship, serve alongside one another, stay in close quarters together. Man, I know Ben Isler so much better because I slept next to him for a week in Mexico. All right? It's just awesome. You just gain a new level of relationship with one another. When you get to rally together, you get to say, you know what? There's a lot of things in our lives right now that don't matter because we're going to be focused on what Jesus is calling us to do and he's calling us to do. So the who of it, the who gets to be part of this trip, it's going to be a rolling in mission. So we'll walk through uh, the application a little bit at the end. Uh, they are due December 1st. And there's a lot of things in there. And yes, the application is a paper application. No, it's not available online. You guys get off too easy these days with being able to type everything. I want us to write because I think when we actually take time and handwrite, it creates a little bit more of intentionality and we have to think through things a little bit more. 
And so you have the application, you'll be able to walk through that. It's due the first, and then we'll have a rolling, or we'll have interviews. Everyone that wants to go on the trip, I'm gonna be interviewing. We're gonna talk about why do you wanna go on this trip, talk through some big, big aspects, talk through some pretty real things. And then there's gonna be a rolling admissions process. And what I mean by that is, depending on how many people apply, there's a, there's a chance we might not be able to take everybody because of the size of the group. So it's gonna start uh, with the current juniors and seniors. So the classes of 21 and 22 will be in the first bucket, sophomores and then freshmen following that. And that'll be based on the group size. And keep in mind where serve, we were able to take as many as we wanted to because we were just camping. And it was a matter of pitching another tent. We are restricted with this to 100 people between three churches. So I have to coordinate with them also to see how many people they're bringing. And we have to keep a ratio in mind, knowing we can't just bring everyone we want. We have four rooms, which logically would say two rooms for guys, two rooms for girls. So for you guys, for the guys and for the girls, it's like, it's not really a group of 100, it's a group of 50. So we just have to have a little bit of a rolling admission process there. Uh, there's also, I'm gonna be recruiting some leaders to help. Uh, if you are wondering about that, who gets invited in a way to come and, and have another conversation about serving on a trip like that is largely dependent on what students are coming and not just like who they are like, oh, Matt's going, I guess I need more leaders. Not like that, but guys and girls. If we have an influx and a ton of girls want to go, well, then I'm going to have to recruit more female leaders to join me than guy leaders. And it just depends on wanting to keep a good ratio. One of the things that you'll see in this application is that there are requirements. It's not just sign on the dotted line and call it good. There are a list of personal and practical requirements that I am welcome or I'm open to talking more about with you as we need to. I don't talk well while I'm looking through a paper, packet of papers, clearly. They're in there. Uh, but I want people that, that are engaging with Jesus because we're going to represent him. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have all the answers. I'm not saying anything like that, but I want you to be, I want you to be tracking. Don't let that deter you. Fill out the application and we'll talk about it more one-on-one, -on -one, what that means. I keep trying to advance the slides on my computer. It's not working. Money. So a lot of these things I know comes down to money. Uh, it's cheaper than serve for two reasons. It's shorter. And I forgot the other one, but it's cheaper. Well, oh, and thank you. I'm not saying it matters. So for serve, we saved at Masters University uh, for three days before and two days after the trip. And it was insanely expensive. Uh, this, like I said, the church that we're going to is allowing us to stay there for free, which is incredibly gracious. I don't even care what the facility is like. We'll take free. Free is awesome. Um, and they're near the beach, I think. So that's even better. So it's $12.50 per student and $7.50 per liter. And I want you guys to know in clear transparency, that $7.50 per liter, I'm going on this trip as a leader. That includes me. I'm, pay I'm paying my way, just as the same as you, you guys. It would be terrible for me to ask a team hey, go fundraise, go sacrifice, go save. But hey, my cost is built into your cost. No, that's terrible. That's not a model of leadership that I want to go under. Um, so I'm paying as well. That $12.50 for students, transportation, so that's airfare to and from California, that's van rentals, everything like that, housing in California and Mexico, building materials. So Caravan has two costs. One is cost per person to stay at their facility. And the other one is cost per house. How does it cost money to build? That cost is spread out amongst the team. Um, a majority of the food will be covered both in California and Mexico. And there'll be other stuff here and there that is covered as well. Maybe we'll go out for ice cream sometime. I don't know, you just have to see what happens. Uh, what it doesn't include is spending money. Man, I love you guys. I want you to remember this trip. I am not paying for your souvenirs. You're welcome to buy your own stuff and bring it back. We'll talk about some of that stuff um, as we get closer. Um, some personal supplies. We were able to, last year, because fundraising went so well, we were able to purchase a number of supplies needed by the team out of fundraised money. That just depends how well fundraising goes. If there's bare necessities that people on a team will need, gloves, hammer, water bottles, things like that, um, that'll be up to the individual. Now, I know for a lot of us, $1,200, I mean, that's, that's not a small amount. I don't look at that. And, think, oh, no problem. We're gonna be fundraising. We have a wide variety of fundraisers. They fall into different categories. One of the biggest is uh, we'll work as a group to send out support letters. So that's explaining to people in our lives, here's what this trip is, here's why I wanna do it, here's how you can help. 
And it's absolutely incredible. There's people out there that want to give. They just want to be asked in a personal way. So being able to talk through some of those things, that's a large portion of our fundraising. We also have group fundraisers that we did. Last year, we did a couple of times of we could rent out Applebee's up by Glacier Peak and serve breakfast to people. A group fundraiser that did not go to any individual. It went to the group's overall cost. And then those funds were distributed based on need. And then there's individual fundraisers. We did rent a student. We've done other things um, where an individual says, hey, I, I want to go do some extra work. I know that Steve said, hey, he'll pay 50 bucks to whoever will go paint his house. I'll go paint his house and earn 50 bucks. It's a great deal. Uh, things like that. Like my dad hired a couple of the guys and we went up there and built some stuff for his garden. Um, different things that people want to offer. Uh, I will say one of the people that took probably the most creative approach to this was Anthony because the day last year that it snowed or two years ago when we had a bunch of snow days, Anthony was out shoveling people's driveways and people gave to his trip as a result of that. It's things like that that we have to think about that we can look for ways. It's not just sitting back and passively hoping that the money comes in. There's some action required, but we can serve other people. And if they, if they pay us for it, great. If not, what an awesome opportunity to serve one another. But there is an element of sacrifice. A trip like this, in many different ways, not just money, but it should cost you something. I mean, it's gonna cost you, it's like eight, nine, 10 days of your summer vacation already. That's a cost. We're gonna have monthly meetings and other stuff uh, January to July. That's a cost. We, we're going to be inconvenienced a little bit. There's a financial side of it, looking for ways to serve. It may be, well, I, I have a job and I'm going to set aside a little bit of money from each of my paychecks to help, to help cover my cost. If you think about it, if you take $1,250 over six months, 200 bucks a month, that feels a little bit more doable. 50 bucks a week. We start looking at things different, but there is a little bit of sacrifice and personal cost. I want to encourage you, plan ahead, be creative. Uh, and a note for the parents, and we'll communicate this out again, is if, you're, if you give the green light and your son or daughter is on the trip and you endorse it and things are going well, at the end of the day, whatever gap they have remaining on their fundraising, the family is responsible for. How you choose to handle that at home is, is up to you, but at the end of it, families are responsible. Please don't be somebody that uh, is lazy and passive with fundraising and allows the group to carry it. Be an active part. I'm not saying that everyone will bring in the same amount of money. There are some people that bring in more and we're able to use that to go to other people that are doing their best. It's all part of a team, but family is ultimately responsible. So next steps, you're thinking, okay, I'm interested. We have applications up here. They are due uh, December 1st. Let's walk through it a little bit. I'll show you. So here is just a page telling you what is inside. So when you look at it, you'll know what to find. The first paper you've probably already seen, that is the information uh, on the one sheet that's been floating around. There's some in the lobby as well as on the website. And then we have the application. And it's not short because I want you guys to spend some time with it. Be honest on this. You don't gain anything by, by lying on it. You also don't gain anything by making yourself look better. There's an area here that talks about skills. If you don't have music skills, it's okay. Just, just be honest. Um, so you'll have an application. There's several pages. There's also a parent page. Parents, there's some questions for you to answer. You don't have to share how you respond to these necessarily with your son or daughter if you don't want to. You could fill that out and just give it back to me. And then there's some information here about when it's due. Um, and I have it attached a $50 uh, deposit to the application. That's a little bit showing, hey, I'm in. If you are not accepted onto the trip or, the, or decide to pull out before the new year, that, that money is refunded. If not, if you're on the trip, congratulations. Now you only have $1,200 to go. But there's something different about when you attach a deposit, it feels a little bit more real. We're already starting with that idea. And then there's two reference forms in the application. These also are due December 1st. Now I recognize we like to use our teachers for these and this is gonna be a little bit harder seeing as that we're not with our teachers physically day in and day out. Welcome to being creative. There are some requirements on this first page about what and who can be a reference for you. So there are two. One filled out by someone that attends church that's not on staff and not on the elder board and not a family member. 
and the other one by a teacher or someone that could be a, a coach in that way. If you have questions about who, you can just let me know, but there's two of those in there for you, as well as how they can turn it back into me. And then there's this mission covenant. This walks through some of the, the things that we're gonna rally together as a team about how we're gonna treat one another, how we're gonna treat this experience and the trip. The meeting dates are in here. Uh, I've gone through and pulled one day um, every month for the most part that we're gonna be meeting together as a team. These are important times to come together. There's a lot to cover in six months. Please make these a priority. Once the team is solidified, if there's a date that does not work, and everyone can agree to another day so you can shift that. But as of right now, these are the dates. There are some Saturdays and there are some Sundays uh, mixed around. There's also one of the most important days on here you'll see uh, is May 8th. It's an all day event. That is with the other two churches that are going. We're gonna be gathering all together and doing some fun stuff together, which will be super cool. Then there's also an overnight retreat. Hopefully overnight retreat, we'll see what's going on. One note on the meetings. We're in a weird, a, a, a weird world right now with meeting in person together. We are not going on a digital mission trip. When the team is solidified and we begin to meet in January, team trainings are in person. I completely respect, I completely understand and honor families. And if that is something that you say, I cannot agree to that either. I don't feel comfortable or I don't want my son or daughter to, to do that. You have my understanding. But the time is short and it's really valuable and we need to come together as a team in, in person because there's gonna come a time that we are in person on a plane and in Mexico and we can't. Sorry, Zach, I'm not gonna let you zoom, zoom in to a mission trip next summer. <laughs> That'd be weird. Um, there's some other things in here. There's um, some disciplinary stuff that's good to read through and just understand what's going on. And then this last page will get signed and turned to me. Uh, but all of that information is here. It is detailed out for you. If you have questions, um, you can let me know. And then, like I said, then we'll have um, an interview. We'll meet and we'll talk about why do you want to go on this trip. I'll be looking at your application, your references, and we'll talk through some of that stuff, and then we'll dive in. Uh, my plan is with applications due December 1st, which is a Tuesday, so that's a, a, an iGroup night. You guys can bring them then at the very latest then start interviews pretty much right away and by the new year by christmas and new year's to have our team uh, figured out so that in january we can come together for the first time the big question a lot going on right now what do we do if things don't go according to our plan first of all a mission trip like this and really a mission or service opportunity in any regard is an opportunity to be obedient to jesus at the end of the day, we are going to be obedient to wherever he calls us to go and whatever he calls us to do. There is a chance that might not be Mexico. Two of the things that we have to hold in, in tension with one another, we have no control over, where will COVID-19 be? And what will be the status of the borders? If Caravan Ministries says, hey, we love you, but we're not allowing groups to come and stay with us due to COVID-19. We look for another option. If the borders are closed, even if caravan is welcoming groups, if the borders are closed, obviously that's a problem. So there are three main possibilities. The first, and the one that I hope we start praying for, is that this trip happens as we, as we hope. That we're able to go to caravan, we're able to go to Mexico, have a wonderful time, nobody gets sick. And it's incredible. The second option will be we will look for something stateside of caravan or the border does not allow us to engage in this. We will, we will shift to a plan B. And we have the other youth founders and I, we have a date in mind that we will be making that decision um, in the spring of being able to shift and do something else. And then the third option, which we hope does not happen as the trip itself uh, is canceled or postponed to another year. One of the things that we will be talking about as a team is if a trip is canceled and we've been fundraising, what then? And the short answer is whatever funds are donated at that time, if the trip needs to be canceled, will be held in a student ministry mission account to be used only for future mission trips um, with student ministries. We will communicate that out, especially in support letters to people. If there are family or friends that donated to the trip and have an issue with that, 
and the trip ends up getting canceled, we can work with them. But other fundraise uh, donations and anything like that will be held for future mission trips. It's important that we know that going into it. There, if, if it gets canceled, there is an element of loss, but we can also celebrate being able to equip others. And maybe even the same group pieces on the time, being able to go and serve. And as always, um, student ministry leadership has the right to cancel or adjust the trip uh, at any time. And that's as I and others see fit to have to make some of those decisions. So there's a couple of ways that you can support. Obviously, if you're a student, you're probably most interested in going. Um, one of the things that we're going to be communicating out to the rest of the church, as well as family and friends, is there's other ways that people can help you if they can't go. And the first is joining a prayer team. Last year, we had a group uh, together that, that said, hey, we will pray every day for the trip while you guys are gone. And what we would do is I would text Amanda throughout the day, hey, here's an update. Here's how the team is doing. And she would send out a note to those people so that they got some insight to what's going on because we're not communicating with family every day or while we're on the trip but that's the way that people can be praying for us. She was also able to alert families if anything came up. Uh, financial giving, obviously a big part of it that we're hoping that other people will be joining us with. Um, there may be people in our church that say, hey, I'd love to cook a meal for you guys and provide food during your meetings and trainings, that's awesome. And then participating in fundraising, they're supporting us during the fundraiser, giving to them. Last year we did a, a bake sale as part of the Mill Creek Garage Sales and we had families at Northview bringing us all sorts of stuff that they donated to here sell this in the bake sale. Oh man, that was so much fun. It was so good. So that was a half hour of a lot, maybe a lot, but I'm curious, what kind of questions do you have? And if you are, if you are on zoom and have questions, you can just send them in the chat and I will keep an eye on that. Uh, but what kind of questions either parents, students, or anybody else have about where things are at right now? Yeah, Joe. We don't bring any power tools. No, we only bring everything that we build, we're building with hammers and handsaws. So that's how we bring in. Yeah, but I should have mentioned that. Yeah, there's no, no we don't bring power tools. There's no generator on site. We're not plugging into anything, nothing gas. Uh, and what we did last year is most of us at the end of the week, gathered all of our tools together and gave them to Caravan to be able to keep using. Because they do this, they run uh, build teams like this like for four or five months of the year and then some uh, throughout the week, a year as well. So they, I mean, you can imagine, for those of you guys that do any type of construction, you run through tools so incredibly fast. So we're able to give those to them. I'm kind of hoping that some of them, like when we're there, like, hey, that's, that's Paige's hammer, or like something like, I don't know. <laughs> we gave them a ton of stuff when we, were, when we were there because it meant less stuff to have to bring home. We tent camped and we left the tents um, with them, which was so nice. But yeah, does that answer what you were asking about tools? Yeah, the border. Yep, no power tools. A lot of manual labor. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, what will the transportation transportation throughout the trip? Excellent question. Uh, we'll be flying first from Seattle to San Diego, and then we rent either 12 or 15 passenger vans and utilize those the whole time. Uh, so those will be driven either by myself or another leader. And depending on the size of the team, we'll determine how many vans we have. Um, if the team is under 15, we'll have one and we'll all be together. Last year we had 23 people, so we had two vans and we'd split up each day to go build and, and drive around. But 12 to 15 passenger vans, I will say I had a sprinter and it was awesome. Shannon did not have a sprinter and it was not, it's still awesome. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll use vans while we're down there. We are joined, one of the things I guess I should have mentioned too, uh, Caravan has, a, like I mentioned, they have a group of interns. They come with every build, um, which is great because you start looking at a pile of lumber on the concrete bed and don't know what to do. When we are on the job site, that, that Caravan intern is the boss. They tell us what needs to be done. In some of those regards, it does not matter what other construction or building experience we have they know the kits that they use and the best way to put them together. And we get to listen to them, which also means sometimes we get to have grace for them as they're young and learning, but it's usually a lot of fun being alongside them. So they come with us to every job site. Most of them speak Spanish. There are some times that your group and your intern are there with a family and there's not a lot of Spanish uh, going on between you guys. And it's, it's awesome. It's a fun thing. We'll be working on how to 
overcome that in some of our training. Uh, but they're with us. They either drive with us, they, sometimes they jump in the van, or they have their own transportation that they'll, they'll follow along. Yeah, planes and vans. Yeah, Heather. For the payments? Um, we'll take it. <laughs> oh, for like when it's all due? So what I do is I, I keep track during the whole time. So every donation that's given or fundraiser opportunity goes first through me and I have a big spreadsheet and I keep track of everybody's and I would give periodic um, updates either weekly or people could ask how much do I owe and I could say where they were at. Uh, and then I believe I put in here um, for July, either July 1st or towards the end of June, all funds paid in. Um, yeah, but there's not necessarily like, at this point, you should have like $700 raised or something like that. It's an ongoing thing. Some people got it right away. Some, it took a little bit longer, but I keep track of all of it. It's super easy to get in real time. Uh, Diana, our bookkeeper, she gets the mail. Maybe we all send out support letters. Checks come in and she would just give them to me first and it says who they go to and I'm able to just put it straight in. What I then do with that is provide students with a list of who gave and there's an expectation on providing um, updates after the trip or thank you notes and different things and you can divide or uh, divide that as a team but they are given that information anyone that wants it can easily get and like Paige Courtney and Anthony were on the trip last year easy enough to, to text me and say hey who's given and maybe Anthony texts me today who's given I give him a list of five names and in two weeks he texts me he's like okay I sent them thank you notes who else is given and I say since then here's two more names and you just keep rolling we want to see. Yeah, what else? Other questions? Shana, you were there. Anything else that you remember from our experience? I'm not sure yet. It really depends on, on the size of the group and the, the gender breakdown of it. Um, I would like at least myself <coughs> and one or two others. Um, it starts first with looking at the students that are going and their their small group leaders seeing if any of them want to go and other people that i know that might be interested so it's kind of the leader situation is the <laughs> is fun to navigate but um there will at the very minimum be myself and if there are girl students there will be a female female leader and then hopefully one or two others we had uh, for our team of 23 we had six leaders seven six We had a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had a little bit skewed because as a group, like between all the churches, like Cameron came with us, but he was also functioning as photography and video for the whole group. And so we shared some of those responses. We had seven, is that what it is? We had seven. But we had more students and then some dropped out after we got all the leaders on board. So it's all right, leader heavy's not bad. We gotta keep an eye on Anthony. Any other questions? Cool. That's fine. If you have anything else, um, you can let me know, reach out to me. Many of you have my contact information. It is on here. If you don't have it, my phone number, you can call or text me in my email address. Um, yeah, this is a, it, it, it can be a very incredible opportunity. I will say a trip like this, um, you will get out of it what you put into it. If you come in eager and excited and want to serve other people and come together as a team and, and love the Lord, it's going to be incredible. If you come in kicking and dragging your feet and are a bum on the whole team, your experience is going to be terrible. We're also going to make sure of what? What are we going to do really well during the trip? Drink water. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot when we're down there. We're doing work. You'll be amazed. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anthony. The only leader that is for sure going on the strip right now is me. <laughs> I say the, the leader most likely going is me. I might decide based on who decides to join. I'm like, I'm not going on that trip. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, fair. That's probably really funny. 
<laughs> there wasn't. Everyone else. Man, your buddy's got your back. Uh, hey, let me close in prayer for us. And Oh, wait, we have a question online. Did you mention the other two churches that we are teaming with? I did not. That's a valid question. Um, Journey Church in Federal Way, their youth pastor is Tim Vincent. Um, he's been in the youth game for 35 years. He's an awesome guy. Uh, he has gone to Caravan I think every year since, I don't know, 19, what? Yeah. So he's been, he's been with it the whole time. He, he knows his stuff. He knows Caravan. He's got a great relationship with them. And the other one is Little Rock Community Church down um, kind of near Great Wolf Lodge. So their um, associate pastor, Westcott, was a youth pastor at Westwood Baptist down in Olympia, and he switched to a different church there, kind of the, the converge adjacent. Um, but he's been a bunch of times as well, and, and I, he's excited to join. So those are the three. There is one more potential church, but we're not sure. Um, they're going through, the, through some youth um, leadership transition right now, and that's not usually the best time to add on to um, join the, another church that may or may not come. We'll see. But those are the three for sure. Us, Journey, and Little Rock. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't see that question sooner. All right. Well, hey, I'd love to pray for us. And then uh, feel free to come up here and grab an application uh, if you would like one. But let's go to the Lord. Jesus, I pray that even before we start to put a team together, that each of us have a conversation with you. A trip like this is only possible with and through you. Lord, as we're trying to decide as, as students if we want to sign up and apply or not, may you talk to us. And may we make sure that our heart is in the right place, Lord. This isn't a trip for prestige and eliteness. This isn't even a trip that should set us apart from, from other students and from our peers, Lord. It's truly an opportunity to, to serve other people to enter into their world humbly as you entered into ours and be able to extend a helping hand, but also just learning more about you through the process and to be able to come together and establish friendships and relationships in new ways. Lord, may you be part of the process of bringing this team together. May it be the team that you desire, not the team that, that I want, not the team that we think should go, but the team that you want to put in place. And may we be May we be obedient to that. May we support whoever's on that team. In your son's name, amen. All right, applications, like I said, are available. Um, if you want to grab one. Somehow I've ended up with two myself up here. Thank you guys for coming. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out sometime. Grab a snack on the way out.